welcome to Let's Dig In. Today we're going to continue with Abraham's family. So we already talked about Abraham. We already talked about Sarah. Today we're going to be talking about Isaac. So let's see what he went through or his journey and what what caused him to be qualified into this Halls of Heroes. What is <laughs> the Heroes of the Faith? Yes, I don't know why I want to call it like the Hall of Fame, which is kind of it. Kind of is, but really you is. know, whatever. It's a very important verse. So we're gonna be talking about him today. So stay tuned. Thank you guys again for joining us today. You're watching Let's Dig In. I'm Merari and I'm Elda. Let's do this. All right. So. We're going to be talking about Isaac. Now, Isaac was a little tough when I first started reading his story because I was like, well, he didn't really do many significant things compared to like his dad who did like this whole crazy thing, mm -hmm. which we talked about before where he literally left his hometown, his family to move into the unknown with no destination, not knowing where he was going to go. Um, so it made it a little tough, but like the more we delve into it, the more like we sit and, you know, like you meditate, the more you find out like, okay, so there's a lot we can learn from Isaac and what he went through and the, and how similar it was to his dad's too. So it kind of oh, yeah. makes you wonder like, okay, well, is my situation similar to like what my parents went through? <laughs> so it's kind of cool to like see how sometimes things repeat. Yeah, or like history. how we were talking earlier about how um, as leaders or like for the parents out there, like um, how easy it is for your kids to end up following exactly what you're doing right. because you're leading by example. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that's something that we saw here too is a lot of repetition. Like we'll go over it, but we see a lot of him following exactly in his dad's footsteps. And I think that's so funny to see, like literally, a lot of the things are like exactly as they have been before. <laughs> so just reminds you, you know watch out <laughs> but yeah so and so we're in hebrews again so he, mm -hmm. hebrews eleven 20 we're still in the book of genesis for those who are wondering where we're at um we're still going off of hebrews 11 we are in verse 20 now where it talks where it says it was by faith that isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons jacob and esau so we're gonna go ahead and talk about this because you're probably like who is Jacob and Esau, I thought we were only talking about Jake. <laughs> we will let you know. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, explain all of this. We're still in Genesis, for those who are wondering. Yes, a lot of these um, heroes are in Genesis, but we'll, get, we'll eventually move out of Genesis. <laughs> but for now, we're still in Genesis. Yes. So just a little recap on who Isaac is, because I know we went over Abraham and Sarah. So Isaac is their miracle child, literally a child that... Mm -hmm according to our human laws, should not have been born. It shouldn't have been possible. But he is their miracle child. He is what you call the child of laughter. His name literally means laughter because his parents laughed and they found out that they were going to have him. And he is well, also... They him. Yeah, they laughed. <laughs> they <After>. laughed. <laughs> and then um, he was also the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham. So he was, you know, his promises started with Abraham and were fulfilled through Abraham's life, through Sarah, and then to Isaac. So that is where we are going now. Yeah, so his journey of faith started actually at a very young age. Like a lot of the ones that we've been talking about earlier have been more of like when they're older. Mm -hmm. But Isaac's actually started at a young age. If you guys recall, we talked about how he and his father, Abraham, went up into a mountain to do a sacrifice. But little did he know that, you know, that sacrifice was him, it was Isaac. <laughs> and the story doesn't really tell us like how old he was it just told us tells us that he was of age to be able to carry the wood so he, he had to be like on the older side and then he also at one point asked his dad like hey what happened to the, like, the actual you know the sacrifice <laughs> yes. so he had to be in a, at a pretty good understanding age um to know like hey something was up or something mm -hmm. was going on so we can just already see like his exposure like he obviously grew up knowing that he was a miracle child and just like most um people out there who know their <laughs> miracle child they know for a fact they're a miracle child yes. i'm pretty sure he knew he was a miracle child up until this point so when they were going up into this journey with the up the mountain and realizing they don't have a sacrifice and mm -hmm. um he's obviously it looks sketchy <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here <laughs> yeah well, one of the things that we learned here is, is his obedience because he was obeying what his father was telling him even to the point where he, like we mentioned 
we don't know how old he is, but the fact that he was able to carry wood and to know what was happening, he probably could have fought his father um, to not be sacrificed, yeah. if that makes any sense. Like, he was old enough that he probably could have fought back, like but he didn't. Like, defend himself, yeah. Yeah, but he didn't. So right here, it just tells us his faith that he has, like, his faith that is to the point of, like, obedience to even to the point of death. Yeah. And that's something that can be applied to us, too, because it's like sometimes we are called, um, and this is where it really calls to those who are being been martyred that um, die for the faith, because a lot of times they just have to, okay, well, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, kind of thing. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy when you think about it, it's the fact that he didn't fight for it, he didn't be like, cry out for it, he was just like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to die, and <laughs> kind of thing. And it's like, he took it like a champ. I feel <laughs> like that, that speaks on your faith, because... Like, to, like, I don't want to say my faith is little, but still, I think I would, like, cry and, like, fight back, like, oh, no, no. But he just, like, went with him, and he was like, okay, like, we'll do this. Like, like how you were saying, he was at the age that he knew something was missing. Like, I feel like if you were, you were going with someone up to this hill, and you know there had to be a blood sacrifice, because that's what they were doing, a blood sacrifice. And there was nothing to sacrifice, but it was like, oh, it's just you and me going up there. It's like, um, what's going on here? Like, this is, this is not what I signed up for. So I just think that speaks so greatly on his faith that he was like, well, if it's me, it's me. And it's, it's what it has to be. Yeah. So like despite like maybe what was going in his mind, mm -hmm. he remained humble to the point of death. And this is something that's really cool because, again, we always talk about these metaphors that reflect Jesus's life. This also reflects Jesus yeah. later on. If we read in Acts 8, 32, it says the passage of the scripture that he has been reading was this. It says that he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before the sneers, sneers. <laughs> He did not open his mouth. So just the same way like with Jesus when he was sacrificed on the cross. And then another verse that um, emphasizes this as well is Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep he was silent before the sneers. He did not open his mouth. So then it just tells us this great faith that is required that even sometimes it's even to the point of death. Yeah. And it just tells you how tremendous his faith had to be or how much he was already exposed to it that he was able to, okay, not like yeah. fight it, not like Rebuke argue it, it. Or like go against it. Like yeah. that's no longer my faith. Like he stayed in faith and he was faithful to what he thought was going to be his very end. Yeah. And this had to leave a big impact on him because not only was he almost at the point of death, he was also rescued. Mm -hmm. So uh, not only he was rescued, so that's something that had to have stayed with him. That's something like, I guess, I personally, I wouldn't forget either. So it's something that he obviously carried into adulthood mm -hmm. that we can see that um, despite the different things he goes through, he knows he will have the victory. He knows that God will be there with him. Yes. So then that's something for us to apply to. Like when we go through something hard, are we looking back and noticing like the different things that God has helped us throughout the way, throughout all of, yeah, throughout history <laughs> and all the different things that he has helped us with. Are we using that to help us moving forward? Or are we looking back and looking like, oh my gosh, I've gone through all these different things. Let me <laughs> list them um, and make it more negative as opposed to more positive and seeing like, okay, well, this has happened in the past and God helped me out. Okay, so then whatever I'm going through now, God is going to help me out. I feel like that's so interesting because it does change your mindset. It goes from all of the things I've gone through all, everything I've struggled through instead of everything that I've gone through, everything that I've accomplished, that I've worked through, that I've come out on top of. So I feel like it's, it's definitely should change your mindset instead of like, oh, I had to go through this, is I went through this and I'm here now. Yeah, so the fact that he um, was able to be delivered from that mm -hmm. and he was saved from that, that helped him to carry forward and that I guess deepened his roots even more that like God saved me so that I know like who I trust in and, you know, yes. that's God kind of thing. <laughs> and we can clearly see this. So that was like one of the first things that we see in his life. So, and then another thing that we, I guess, start to learn about Isaac is that he submitted to God's will in choosing a wife. So yeah. we notice a lot of things is that he really just lets God, you know, take care of a lot <laughs> of different things. So it just tells you the big faith that he had. Um, he literally allowed God 
to write his love story, which is kind of cool if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because of course, when mar we think of marriage, that's something very important. And it's not something that we can just choose like, oh, whatever, like one yeah. day later, I'm just going to get married to whoever. It's not <laughs> something we choose lightly. I mean, yes, the culture tells us something else because divorce is a thing. However, in the word and what God has established, that's not how marriage works. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew... 19, six, four, sorry, 19, four through six, it says, um, Jesus answered you, haven't you read the scripture that says that in the beginning, the creator made people male and female. And God said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and unite with his wife and the two will become one. So they are no longer two, but one. No human um, being must separate then what God has joined together. So just right here, we know that marriage is a serious thing. It's, um, yeah. it's contrary to what culture tells us now. No, marriage is still a big, it's important. There's a lot of benefits to it. Um, we're not going to get into all of that. We're <laughs> just to focus on what Isaac here yeah. did. <laughs> so when Isaac was seeking a wife, it was actually uh, Abraham who was the one that was more like not necessarily pushing it, but he was the one that was advising him on how to find a wife. Yes. And one of the biggest things that we see is that Abraham was big on like not marrying a Canaanite because they lived in the Can with among the Canaanites, so they mm -hmm. weren't really among fellow Israelites. Yes. <laughs> so that was one of the, the biggest things that Abraham pushed. He's like, I don't want him to marry a Canaanite. I want him to marry um, someone in my family, uh, so, um, an Israelite, basically. And right here, and the big reason, and I think we see this all the time, and even like when we were younger, we kind of questioned this as well. <laughs> it's how like a lot of parents would say like, you need to marry a Christian. Now, the reason for this is because they want to be evenly yoked. And this is something Abraham realized as well, because if um, his son Isaac were to marry a Canaanite, he would most likely be influenced by their culture, by what they have, and most likely pull him away from what they have, like the relationship they have with God, because the Canaanites were other religions. They didn't worship God. So, and this is why a lot of times we have parents now, we, we, we should, your parents should, you as parents <laughs> should, yes. uh, encourage your child or you yourself, encourage yourself to marry someone who is in the faith, because when um you when you marry someone else that isn't it's very easy to get pulled out of it it's i feel like not it's usually a lot of people think <laughs> that you pull in but it's not i how feel it like works. it's very hard to like keep your faith like the way it was explained to me is you're supposed to become one person you're supposed to be one so imagine inside your inside you fighting like yes no yes no so that's what it is having someone that is outside of your faith who doesn't have your morals or your beliefs or your interests it's like trying to fight yourself like no but yes but no but yes because it's not matching you and that's why they say you know marry within a christian marry within your faith because then you know that you have the same foundations and even with your struggles you know like okay our morals our standards our issues our foundation is the same so you can get through it and when it's not it's very hard because it's like trying to argue with someone that's not even on your level or in your home and it's it's hard that's why they always say marry within your faith yeah, exactly. And this is what's so uh, amazing with Isaac and how he allowed um, his father and God to just take mm -hmm. care of that area because he didn't let his emotions um, dictate him. Because sometimes, of course, when you fall in love, you're in love. So even if your parents don't approve, you're in love, right? <laughs> um, so that's the cool thing that we see here is that he heeded to the counsel of his father because of that. And, you know, he didn't let his emotions be like, well, I, the Canaanite women are around me <laughs> kind of thing. There's no Israelite women. So he didn't like fight like that. He was like, okay, well then kind of thing. And you know that God was literally in this, um, marriage or in this so whole arrangement because when Abraham sent his servant to go look for um, Isaac's wife, he literally made it very easy for him to find them. Even the servant um, did this little prayer in Genesis 24, 12 that says, Oh Lord God, my master Abraham, please give me success on this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. And it wasn't even that long after he said this prayer that 
uh, Rebecca comes in to play. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that. And it just shows you when we, um, it's all about God's timing. I mean, yeah. us, yes, we know sometimes we're like, okay, well, I'm getting older or uh, I want to get married now kind of thing. And it's like, no, we just need to allow God to be in control and allow God, okay, well, God, you know that I want to get married or God, you know what it is for my future. So I'm going to allow you to take control. And it's really cool because then, again, God wrote their love story. And it's yeah. really it's really pretty. I feel like this goes back to if you've watched our videos, you know, we talked about the topic love. And we talked about how it's a choice. It's not a feeling because feelings go away. Feelings change. But a choice, if you stick to your choice, it would always stay there. It'll always be, I made the choice to love this person. I made the choice to be faithful instead of, I just had the butterflies and I just wanted him, you know? So I feel like this just speaks even more greatly on their love because it wasn't a feeling. It wasn't the butterflies. It wasn't a, a moment of interest. It was a choice that they made to be faithful and to love each other. Yeah, and because of this, this marriage was blessed mm -hmm. too. And now moving forward from that too, um, and not to say that he, Isaac was perfect. Of course, he had his flaws as <laughs> well. He is the son of Abraham, of course. Um, so there's a few things that he did. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, there is an incident where um, he passed Rebecca as a sister as opposed to his wife. And this is something that we also see with Abraham that yes. he did with his wife, Sarah. And it's kind of funny, too, because it just reminds like how we just mentioned earlier at the start of the video, how... Like sometimes we probably do things that our parents did, yeah. And it's just it's kind it's kind of funny that you know he didn't he didn't learn from that from his dad. Yeah, or he did learn that from his dad. He just didn't learn the results of that from his dad. I think that's also how we were in the beginning talking about how as leaders you need to be careful how you lead, for example, because there is people watching. And not everyone, because I know people say like, oh, learn from their mistakes, learn from my mistakes. Not everyone does that. People look at your mistakes and they'll be like, but they made it and they came out fine. So we need to be careful with, you know, our choices and what we do as leaders. And for those of you as parents, your kids are watching. So we see here even Isaac fell into the same mistakes as his father did. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it just makes me wonder. I'm like, we, we, probably, we probably do that too. I know, we too, I think about that and I'm like, what have I done that my parents done? Right. And then like another thing we noticed with him is that he, but despite all that, he was still blessed. God was still with him. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that we noticed that he kind of like, uh, yeah, I guess was in, is that he played favoritism. Um, and so what happens later, okay, so let's move on with the story. So we have Isaac and Rebecca get married, and they marry for a long time, and it's actually, the, it's very similar to what happened to Abraham <laughs> yeah. and Isaac, Rebecca. Sarah. Oh, Abraham sorry, and Sarah. sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm going to confuse names today, I'm sorry. It's similar <laughs> to what happened with Abraham and Sarah when they were waiting for Isaac. Isaac and Rebecca were also waiting for a, their miracle child because it was said that she was also barren. Yes, yeah, so she was also barren, and um, so it was 20 years. So Isaac had to pray, pleading to the Lord for 20 years for God to grant him a child. Mm -hmm. And when he did, um, Lord grant, uh, Genesis 25, this is where it happens. The Lord granted his plea, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. But what happened here was that instead of having one child, they had two and they were twins <laughs> well i wouldn't say they were twins they were more like fraternal twins because yeah. they were really different one the first one that i guess came out <laughs> first one born <laughs> was esau and the second one was jacob but i think for this one sorry let me turn to you for this one is how we were talking about how they're very similar to abraham and sarah's um what they were expecting for isaac what mm -hmm. they went through is that here when we see that abraham did as Sarah asked and had, you know, gave her a child through one of her maids, um, Isaac stayed loyal and faithful to his wife. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's why they were blessed with not just one, but two, because they couldn't have children. You know, it was said that she was barren. And because he stayed loyal and faithful and to his wife, and not just, not just to Jesus' promise or God's promise, but to his wife, they ended up getting a double blessing. They got two, not just one child. Yeah. And actually, now that you mentioned it too, they didn't have to wait as long either. Yeah. Um, 
Is oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> Abraham and Sarah waited 25 years. Isaac and Rebecca waited 20 years. I mean, it's still a long time to wait. Don't get me wrong, but they, but they didn't have the to wait <laughs> as long, and they did get a double blessing. Yes. However, they did play favoritism, and we saw this really quickly in Genesis 25:28. It says Isaac loved Esau because he he ate of his game, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Um, so right here, we just see like this big thing and it even applies to us how we shouldn't play favoritism mm -hmm. because we see really quickly what happens. Um, instead of being really close brothers, they actually were very like rivals to each yeah. other, unfortunately. And to the point where they even like tricked for tricked each other for blessings. So we'll talk about that more in a little bit, but. Uh, it wasn't very like yes. good. So it just tells us también as Christians we should not play favoritism. It's as really frowned upon. There's even verses on on this. We have Deuteronomy 10:7, Acts 10:34, Romans 2:11. Even James repeatedly says this not to show favoritism in James 2:1 and 9. Um, so it just tells us uh, through the story of Isaac we see that the negative effects of showing partially favoritism or even favoritism towards one child mm -hmm. or any group of people and for that matter we have been called to love everyone so we need to love everyone yes i know it's hard equally but we need to love everyone <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so and it, it just brings us back to what god or what jesus said in john three sixteen. Um, he did not just die for the christians he died for the whole world so yeah Again, we don't want to show favoritism. <laughs> um, so yeah, so then that's one thing we learn. But regardless of all of these things, um, we see that God still blesses them, and that blessing still continues. Um, but before we talk about more about you know Jacob and Esau, um, another thing that we find with Isaac is that he was a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. um, he allowed. He believed in the vengeance when vengeance was God. Like God will take care of all of these things. And one of the main things that we see it, this in is, you know, back then, of course, we didn't have. They didn't have public waters like how we do, or you know, serv water services. Yes. <laughs> you know, you can't just open a faucet and we get water. Fortunately, that's not how it worked back then. They had to actually dig wells. And there was an instance where Isaac. They built a well, and unfortunately, some other group came in and they took that well. Okay, he left it like that, and he moved on, and he built another well. Okay, another group of people come in, they take over the well. Okay, he let it go, and he went and moved on to another to another place and build another well. And it just tells you right there how he was peaceful and he just allowed God to take care of it. He didn't look out to fight like, hey, this is my well, I made it kind of thing. He, he just left it like that and then just moved on and allowed God to take care of it. And it just shows you too because each time he dug a well, he was blessed. So it yeah. just tells you too, like, hey, if someone comes in, okay, whatever, just walk away and just know that your blessings will follow you. The ver there is a verse that says that blesses, blessings follow me every single day of my life, right? So you can clearly see that the blessings that were placed over him followed him wherever he went. Yes. You can also see in the same chapter, Genesis, we go a little backwards. We go to 12 and it says, I Isaac planted crops in the land and the same year reaped a hundredfold. So when I was reading this, I had seen that a lot of people had planted and nobody was able to grow right. anything. Like their lands were dying. They weren't able to get anything. But the Lord blessed them because he had God's favor. He had his blessing. And then it even says like the king of the land came and told them, move away from us. You're like too powerful. You need to move. And he said, okay. And instead of like being like, well, this is mine. He went out and he shared everything he had. Because he knew he was blessed, and instead of hoarding it, just like Abraham had, they both went and spread all of their wealth, all of their faith, and they gave everything that they had. Yeah, yeah, and this is why in Romans twelve nineteen, Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. And this is something definitely we see with Isaac, that he surrendered his problems to God and allowed him to handle it. So, and that made him like a very peaceful man. Yeah, so um, let's learn from him, you know, because it's very, I mean, I get it. I mean, it's hard sometimes to be like, you want to lash out 
But sometimes it's like, okay, well, let God handle it and just, okay, well, I'll, I'll let it go kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's, it, I mean, it's not easy, but with God, it's all things are possible again. <laughs> I think this just shows you it. I mean, a well isn't an easy thing to dig. Mm -hmm. You know, crops are not easy thing to reap and sow. It's very hard work. It's a lot of work. And he just walked away from me. Okay, that's fine. God, God blessed me so I can just move on and do it somewhere else. And he did it over and over. And he was like, that's fine. Like, I have a blessing and I will keep spreading it. Yeah. So, and we see it here. When we seek peace, sooner or later, we will find the peace. And this is clearly what we see with Isaac, too. Mm -hmm. Even by the time he built that third well, they, they had stopped. So it just tells you like the just seeking peace and then of course everything will become peaceful. Yes. <laughs> so another thing that we notice with Isaac is that he was able to accept God's will when his plan got interrupted. So now we come back to Esau and Jacob. So we course <laughs> we've talked about how they were there was a rivalry between them because um, parents uh, preferred one over the other. Again, Esau was prefer. Uh, Isaac preferred Esau, and then Rebecca preferred Jacob. So and because of this, when it came down to um, giving the inheritance, and this is by the time um, Isaac was dying, he was giving his inheritance to the firstborn, which would be Esau. However, because of the favoritism and all of that, Jacob ended up doing this trick and making himself seem like he was Esau and ended up going to Jacob. Yeah, Isaac. <laughs> Isaac ended up blessing Jacob for the inheritance. So instead of Esau getting the inheritance, Jacob got the inheritance. So after all of that mess, <laughs> um, we can see, though, that God was moving. Because even before they were born, Esau and Jacob, there was a promise saying that, that God was going to bless them. However, the, the younger was going to be over the older one. And we can clearly see that, I think, Isaac already kind of knew. So when Jacob did what he did, he didn't take that blessing back. He was just like, well, this is what God wanted. Let his will be done. <laughs> Jacob's going to be the one that's, been, that's going to get the inheritance. And then Esau is going to be under him, even though Esau was the oldest. <laughs> there's even when um, God lets Rebecca know of this, he tells her like there's two will be born of you and they will be at yeah. war. Yeah, that's the prophecy, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I'm pretty sure Isaac knew already of this and I'm pretty sure he saw the signs and whatnot. So he didn't allow like, oh, well, God, oh, like he didn't get frustrated when things didn't go how they were supposed to be. He would just went with it. He's like, all right, let's go with the flow. <laughs> so it just tells us as well when we're in our lives where we think, oh, this is the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. But now I'm over here. We'll allow God to just, OK, well, God's in control. Then I'm going to go this way kind of thing. Yes. Um, so he wasn't. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to like <laughs> reword it. Yeah, so like Isaac, we might have our own plans and wants in our lives. However, we must align our, our will to God's will if we really want to live a, a life pleasing to God. If there's one thing that we want to happen in, in our life, it must be the will of God. So just right there, we know that, okay, well, this is what God wants, wanted, and this is how it's going to happen. And he didn't take that, inherit, that blessing back that he gave to Isaac. I mean, to Jacob. Sorry, I'm going to mess up these things. <laughs> There's a lot of names here. Um, uh, so, yeah, so we can always have the confidence that God's plan is a better, uh, is a way better than our own plan. So right there, it's far more than what we can imagine. And just like how the scripture says too, how God wants to exceedingly abundantly like bless us mm -hmm. more than what we can imagine, what we can even think or fathom. Like it just tells us like, you know, God has bigger plans for us. Yeah, and yes, of course, it's undeniable that life is sometimes unfair, but God is always fair and he's always merciful and he always has plans. Again, um, again Jeremiah 29, 11, it's a good one to memorize. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So, again, relying on the Lord. Yes, I know things can seem pretty unfair, but we have so much more to gain with God.
Yeah, so the story of Isaac goes further to prove that God's ways are different from our own plans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we can see, there's a lot of things that he went through. I really do encourage you guys to read the stories. Yeah. To go, I mean, we only glance on certain things. There's a lot more things that happen to him. Um, but I do encourage you to read it because there's a lot of things we can learn from him. And then, of course, despite his failures in his walk, he continued to believe. Likewise, despite our mistakes or whatever we go through, we want to continue believing in God and continue in trusting him. And again, the key things is being submissive to God's will to surrender every area of our life to God, even like the little ones, you know, like marriage and what well, what seems little like even your job as well yeah. like what direction do you want me to go god okay i'll go in that or education what is it that <laughs> i should like educate myself in kind of thing and i think this just goes to show us too that god's promises are he's always true to his promises they're greater than any of our mistakes that we can make because we see here that he did follow in some of the wrong mistakes that abraham did but because God had made a promise to Abraham, which looking at this, he could have ended with Abraham said like, okay, I made it to Abraham. We're going to stop it here. And that's it. No, he kept that because his promise was to fulfill the rest of his promise to Abraham to make him a father of a great nation through Isaac. And it even tells us in Galatians 4:28, now you brothers and sisters like Isaac are children of promise. So we have a promise that he is with us, that he is for us, that he wants to give us nothing but good things and blessings. And it just shows that no matter your mistakes, that his promises are greater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's actually goes circles back to the Hebrews 11, 20. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. And it just tells you how that's being carried over um, from from Abraham, Abraham yeah. all the way on. And it's still even it keeps going because we're going to keep going because the <laughs> next one we're going to talk about is Jacob. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and it just tells you, keeps going that despite like him, not Isaac, not having like this great, excited life <laughs> compared to Abraham kind of mm -hmm. thing. There's a lot of things we can learn and you can continue to see that promise um, that is still continuing um, through the generations as well. Yes. So. So again, we always want to remember everything that God has done in our lives. Again, the whole sacrifice with Isaac. Um, we, we want to remember that when we're going through different things, like, okay, if I got out of that, then I'm going to be able to move on forward. Yeah. And that life, uh, my life will be a living sacrifice to God. Again, we want to surrender everything to the Lord, even if it is to the point of death. But I mean, I granted, maybe not all of us will be point to the death, but <laughs> you know, even to the point of death, you want to just like serve the Lord and follow his will. And, and even if it derails or wherever we end up going, yeah. we, you know, trusting in him as well. Yeah. Just know that the easy way out isn't going to always bring the easiest things to your life. Yes. You know, like, um, how we were talking about how in the time with Rebecca, you know, he could have taken the easy way out as his father did and just got a child from somebody else. Mm -hmm. But instead he stayed faithful. And because of that faith, he was blessed with two and not just one. So it just shows like, it's just a reminder. Don't take the easy way out. Don't just, you know, oh, it's too hard. God, like, I'm not going to do it. Just know that on his, even though it may look hard, that there's way more blessings for you there and that he has plans for you, great plans for you, not plans to destroy you. Yeah. Exactly. So keep on moving forward, submit to God's will, you know, allow God to have the vengeance. Don't seek vengeance. <laughs> I, I know it's hard, but, you know, allow God to be in control and submit to him. And likewise, it's what you're going to be showing to your children. So you want to be showing them that great example and like just like how Abraham did with Isaac as well. Yes. So. A lot to learn from him. So I definitely do encourage you guys to read the story. We, mm -hmm. There's a lot more that we didn't touch on too. <laughs> there is. All right. So we're going to go ahead and pray and we'll go ahead and close um, for today. Lord God, we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we just thank you for this time together and this um, being able to learn so much from these different individuals and their different lifestyles, Lord, and how we can apply them to our everyday lives, Lord. And just help us, Lord, that as we are moving through life, Lord, to... Uh, make sure that it's under your will, Lord, that we just pray that everything that we do is your will, Lord, even like the simple things of where to live our, or who to marry, Lord Jesus, that we will just come to you and surrender every area of our life to you, Lord Jesus, and that when we're going through tough times, Lord, that we will just remember the different blessings that you have done before, um, to us before, Lord, and that that will help us carry on mo moving forward, Lord, that we will just hold on to those blessings that you have placed over our lives, Lord. And we just thank you, and we just lift your name on high. In the name of Jesus, we just pray. 
Amen. Amen. All right, guys. So this was Isaac. So if you guys find anything else interesting with Isaac, please let us know in the comments. Like again, um, this family, we actually talk a lot about this, <laughs> this family. So, yes. and it continues. So, I mean, he is, I think he is part of Jesus's lineage too. So it's, it's really cool just how, how we're going through the story and it's, it's awesome. So I definitely <laughs> encourage you guys to read it. If there's anything that stands out to you, let us know. That way we can keep this conversation going. So, so this was Isaac. Next week we're going to be talking about his son, the one who got the inheritance, <laughs> Jacob. So stay tuned and we will see you guys soon. Have a blessed week. And that's it. Yeah. Goodbye. See you next time. <laughs> Bye.